Hey, Alonzo, we, we know obviously that LeBron is your favorite player, but like, what did Kobe mean to you growing up? Uh, Kobe was just, you know, almost just up there um, with him. Um, you know, I feel like my game is more like LeBron's than Kobe, so that's why I think I gravitated toward his game more. But, I mean, Kobe's one of the best to ever do it. And, uh, you know, I'm glad he's getting both jerseys retired. Did you, I mean, like, you like kind of like your dad showing you tape of magic, and, like, did you ever go out of your way to, like, watch anything specifically that Kobe did? And, like, I mean, I watched all Kobe and Shaq. Okay. That was my favorite duo, you know, at the time when I was little. And um, those two, you know, the best shooting guard with the best center, you know, it's tough to deal with. So. Definitely, I watch them all the time. Do you do you think of Kobe as eight or twenty four? Like, is there one is there one guy that you feel like you identify more with? I mean, I part, I think I know twenty four more just because I was older when I was watching them. But I mean, I saw eight as well, and you know, both of them amazing. Um, well, just watching Kobe, I love his mentality. You know, uh, not scared of nobody. Um, you know, always wants to win, very competitive. So I think that's the biggest thing you can take away from his game. No, I, I haven't. You said you said you think of twenty four more. What, what difference did you see between between twenty four and eight? Um, I think twenty four was just more mature. You know, eight was more athletic in my opinion. But on um, twenty four, you know, he had all the footwork down by then. Uh, pretty much mastered mastered you know scoring. And, um, it's unguardable. You guys have a Christmas Day game coming up. Um, how special is that for you to know that you're going to play on Christmas? Oh, yeah, it's my first time. You know, playing a real game on Christmas, so it's going to be a lot of fun. I know my family's going to be there, a lot of my friends, so uh, hopefully put on a good show for them. Do you feel Kobe's influence on this organization at all, or just because you're kind of following in the footsteps of, of him that don't keep them with friendship? I mean, for sure. Anybody, if you live, mention the Lakers, you know, you're going to think about Kobe. So, you know, like I said, I'm glad he's getting both jerseys retired. I think that's fitting for him, and, uh, you know, hopefully put on a good show for him. Steve, I don't know how much of a joke it was or not, just talking about the way he's possibly staying out and watching the ceremony at halftime. Um, I hadn't thought much about it until yesterday's questions, um, and we're you know we're still deciding uh, on, on how we'll we'll approach that uh, the night tomorrow, the halftime tomorrow. Um, you know, our first priority is still the the job that we have, and I'm sure there's going to be some halftime adjustments we need to make against uh, against the Warriors. But um, you know, we're, we're we're toying with a couple of different ideas of letting uh, letting the guys see part of it, at, at least part of it. Um, not sure. I, I didn't see Steve Stan. I heard about. It. I don't. I don't. I, I, I wouldn't think he was joking though. I think his guys would like to watch that. Um, so. Uh, The first time I met Kobe, <laughs> back then rookies had to go to training camp earlier than vets did. So uh, Kobe and all the vets we had on that team showed up about four days later and uh, looked at me and told me my life was going to be a living hell because of what my dad had said about each and every one of them. So uh, I was really excited to meet Kobe and the other vets. and. Uh, that quickly changed. <laughs> Do you remember what your dad said about Kobe? No, it just I think it was more just you know the way my dad does television and and uh, so specifically I have no idea what he said. But from Kobe to Carl Malone to Shaq, they they sat me down at a table and told me life was going to be hell for me. Um, that was my first experience. It was like an official meeting, like, like they sat you. Down. Well, we had a meeting because we like. Hey, rookies and young guys trying to make the team, here are the vets, let's all get together, have dinner, talk about training camp. And at that dinner, that's when they uh, informed me of their plans. So, like, what, what part did like, Kobe specifically have in, in the like, Well, they, he, there was a bidding war that happened on their flight over. And Kobe, I guess Carl ended up paying the most. Um, I guess he outbid Kobe uh, for the rights to own me. Um, but he was just there to, to kind of, they, they kind of did it as a group. I don't know, I mean, his specific role in it, but he was standing over, over me with the other, the other vets on that team. What do you, the, the, 
anything stand out for you, it, for you about actually leaving the no, for the first time it was yeah, it was all of them. It was, I mean, you don't you played on a team with that many Hall of Famers. You're you're coming out of college. You're in you're in awe of all of them. Uh, what stood out to me about Kobe was once practice started and the way that the way that he worked, uh, the way that he's the first one in the building, even though he's you know one of the best players in the world. Um, the way he talked trash every single day and, and didn't just do it in like a fun way like he wanted he wanted your best and he was going to give you his and, and he did it every single day um, all those are uh, those are the type of things that really stuck out to me um, uh, about playing with Cole yeah I was just saying that when he thinks of Kobe he thinks of Kobe on defense and, and that mentality that he had being there up close for all of that what do you what how would you describe the way Kobe approached defense? Um, well, he, the same way he approached it, it wasn't defense or offense, it was winning and being the best. Um, he had a philosophy that if you're aggressive and you foul every time, the rest will officially stop calling it. Um, I said that only works for you because you're an all star, Kobe. I'll foul out of every game. Um, but no, he defense. What he wasn't one of those superstars that was like, I'm just gonna save it for offense and try to score. He wanted, especially in the fourth quarter, he wanted to guard the other team's best player. He studied film on all their moves, uh, so that going into games, he knew what they what their go tos were, uh, what their tendencies were. If there was gonna be a buzzer beater, uh, he was a student of the game, and whether it was defense or offense, he was. Uh, he was going to prepare himself as much as humanly possible to give himself and our team the uh, the advantage. Kobe's a one of a kind type of guy, but is there anybody currently on the team that has like reminds you of him in any respect? You know, um, well, I didn't see. I didn't know. I didn't know Kobe when he was 19 or 20. So uh, a lot of our guys are building towards those type of habits, but uh, you know, I don't. Uh, I've never seen anyone work have the work ethic that that he had, um, but we, uh, you know, you look around our gym. We're slowly creating that type of uh, that type of mindset. I mean, you get every day. Brandon Ingram's in here before every practice. He stays after every practice. You get Kuz and Zoe here an hour after shoot, playing shooting games. So uh, we're getting there uh, right now, though. Uh, to compare the the older Kobe that I knew to these young younger players. Um, I, you know, it's not really fair. Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah, for sure. He he matured. Uh, you know, as a player and a teammate. Uh, when I first got there, he was very. Is this is all basketball and. Uh, as as the team grew, as he grew as a player, I think he started to realize that you know, as as being our leader, it was important that he, uh, you know, he he showed that off the court as well. You know, as far as you know, taking guys to dinner on the road, putting his arm around you, if if it if he felt like it was appropriate, if you needed some of that. Now, you, there was a lot more tough love than the the arm around your neck type of love, but. As as he grew, uh, and as you know, the more years I was on the team with him, I saw him really, uh, you know, really embrace that overall leadership role, as, and, and, and not just the lead by example. Luke, you kind of lamented last year, kind of how the long, how the long uh, halftime with Shaq's retirement ceremony, just kind of that practice can kind of throw guys off in the second half. And Kind of not being in favor of it. Do you do you have to get a little more zen about about this one, knowing it's your guy? Um, I mean, it, it's we, uh, they shouldn't rush through it at all. They should take their time, as they should have with Shaq. Shaq's a, a legend here. I, I just I'm, coach talk is much different than than uh, you know anything else as far as uh, everything that I'm my points are always with what's best for our team and that's you know being in the locker room looking at film and and uh and making adjustments the same routine where it's 15 minutes but that's not realistic i mean i know what this is and we're we, we're honoring one of the greatest lakers and one of the greatest nba players of all time so um you know it'll it, it'll be 
it'll be good for the city, the organization, uh, all the basketball fans. So uh, I'll find a way to be okay with it.